Right, this is part two of Sheila's visit to Ashmore in Dorset in search of the Beeling ancestors. Um, the part one was mainly about me inside the church looking around where I found the burial plan and everything which was extremely useful. Um, so here we go, this is the continuing live tape of me uh, roaming around the church of St Nicholas at Ashmore. Real. <sighs> I don't suppose they've got a burial register, have they? Some churches do have them. There are a lot that have submitted them to. Still taping this, I'm inside the vestry at the moment, to see if there's any burial registers. Don't seem to be anything. Oh, it's worth coming here just for that, really. St Nicholas Ashmore. I'm going outside to look round the graves now. In memory of our dear mother, Mary Ann Plowman, who fell asleep July the 25th, 1884, age 73. Got a plowman somewhere as well. Yes, I tidy it up graveyard. Sarah Sutton, Eli and Anne Sutton, and Betsy Emma Sutton. Stones. So they're in here. Sweet little church, a little bell. Ruth Harper died in nineteen seventy nine, age sixty four. Rosina Curd died nineteen sixty four. Tuffins in here, it's another name. The Davidge, Howells, Watson, Sire, another Watson. Geoffrey George Bradford, he died in 1984, age 72, and Phyllis Joan Bradford, died in 1988, age 73. Jeffrey John Bradford, died 1984, age 37, husband and father. Yeah, their stones would have been removed, wouldn't they? And they couldn't have been that old, those stones, either. A Sturge, Gwendolyn Sturge, 1917 to 2002. Lots of Sturges, a Raymond, a Margaret, an Arthur, some really big tombs, 1949, 1944, for those Sturges. So that could be, that could be a new path. Was done in 1965. It's like a manor wall. That could be the manor next door. Cecil Coombs, Mary Jane Coombs, Tom Coombs, George, a pupil pilot. He died in 1942 or 1915.
lots and lots of empty spaces here. Lots of empty spaces. Now I found um, Harold Frank Ride out, died 1966 age 60. Um, and uh, Dorothy Bessie, doll, she died in 1991. That's an open book type grave, the ride outs. Because they don't keep anything anymore. I wonder what they do with the graves when they remove them. There's piles of old stones up there. Oh, it's a shame, I think. Someone makes that decision to do that to him. Mabel M. Rideout died January the 28th, 1938. She had done what she could. Also, her husband, Joseph Rideout, died 22nd of March, 1968, age 86. Then we've got... I'll, t I'll take a picture of this one. It's a, a little stout grey gravestone of in loving memory of Beatrice Mary Gray, 1883 to 1960, safe in the arms of Jesus. Also Florence Louisa Rideout, 1895 to 1982. I might have them down somewhere so I'll take a picture of that one. Oh, a lot more Rideouts. We've got little children here. We've got a little pot of Rideouts. George Langley, 1933-89, Edward John Ryder, Ted, 1941 84 Little ones, and then in front of that, you've got in loving memory of a dear husband and father, Albert G. Ryder, died the 17th of May, 1962, age 53, and Gwendolyn Grace, devoted wife, mother and grandmother, who died the 29th of December 1980, age 67. That's a ride out. That's quite common. Yeah. Then you've got um, treasured memories of Elizabeth and Charles Gray, 1868 to 1963. Also, daughter Eileen, 1910 to 1988, and her husband, Hugh Arnold. 
George Taylor. That's an old one. I've just taken a picture of North Farmhouse. I'm sure that was mentioned in the census. A nice new bus shelter made of solid wood. Very fitting. And a place called Buttons Row as well. And then you've got the clock house. It's actually got a clock in the wall. Glebe Farm, the old parsonage. And then you've got the War Memorial. For God, King and Country, 1914-1918. The sacred memory of the Ashworn men who gave their lives in the Great War. There was um, a Martin... Corporal James A. Rideout, Dorset Regiment, 5th of November 19, 1918. A Private Frank Merrifield, Dorset Regiment, 25th of February 1919. That could be related. Yeah. Another old cottage called Pond House, thatched. It's all thatched. I'm just trying to find the way home if I go back to the van. Right, I've lost track of time, but I'm walking down this little bridle path near the village of Ashmore. I shan't go far, I want to flag up in the air. There's high fences, you can't see nothing. Right, that's the end of that Ashmore tape. There could be a part three. I'm just going to see if there's a lot of uh, content on there. Amen.